the four hour work week. Is it truth or myth? Stick on all the way to the end of this video. I will get Josh Spurl, founder of Spurl Associates, Canada's top rated CPA and North America's most sought after fractional CFO to answer that question. Welcome back to another episode here. My name is Desmond Soon and I've been a serial entrepreneur running multiple companies and Josh is actually my CPA and fractional CFO. Josh is the founder of Spurl & Associates. Josh, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Now Josh, we have created this series for anyone joining us for the first time and do click on the i button up here if you want to catch some of the other videos in which I'm actually going to pick Josh's brain. You have sent in comments and questions. I've gathered those questions and comments and I've even got a bit of the secret manuscript of Josh's upcoming book that he's about to release. So in this video, I'm going to ask those questions to Josh, pick his brain and also answer some of your questions at the same time. Why should you pay attention all the way to the end of this video? Because Josh, over 10 years, you have been seeing businesses grow and fail and those 4% that succeed. And I'm sure if you're watching this video and you're an entrepreneur or maybe just getting started, you want to pay attention to what Josh has to say in order to succeed. So Josh, let's talk about the four hour work week. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> we, we liked Tim Ferriss. I, I, I think he, he wrote a, a really interesting book and you know, for a short period of time there, I was kind of caught up in the four hour work week. Yes. Myth. Yes. But what's your take on that? Um, there's some good principles in the book, you know, how to batch tasks, you know, how to be more efficient. Um, but really, it might have set entrepreneurship back a decade with the title. Really? Because we know that people, they read titles, they don't read the rest of the book, right? Um, and really, the statistical odds that you are going to build a million dollar business is infinitely low. As we know, it's about one in 5,000. To stack on, on top of it that you're only going to work on that business four hours per week and hope that it works, your odds are you might as well start buying lottery tickets. Um, it's very, very unlikely that you are going to build a successful, sustainable business over the long term by working only four hours per week. But wait a minute, Josh, hold on. Let me, let me clarify this. You mean I can't be sitting on some beach with my laptop, my, my rented Lamborghini, you know, uh, drinking a pina colada. You know, I, you know, I just turn on my internet, I got some VAs, I, I, I put out some things and I make some money and I just go back and enjoy the rest of my life? It can happen. It's just not statistically likely to happen, right? And gotcha. so, you know, this whole thing is about how do we beat the odds, right? How do we stop playing the casino game of business and flip the odds and be the card counter at the blackjack table? So if you're going to do that, that's not likely going to work, right? And one of, you know, one of the most powerful quotes that, you know, I, I put in my book, right, yes. was a Gary Keller quote. He, was, he says, time on a task eventually beats talent every time. Correct. So, uh, time on a task eventually beats talent every time, right? Yeah. Um, and so what's very powerful is when you read into who Gary Keller is, Yeah, right? he's the one, the author of the book, The One Thing, right? Author of the book, you know, but he made his money building you know the largest real estate firm right Correct. and yeah. the real estate is like the the stereotypical business owner who you think is on their cell phone and perpetually distracted and and you know yet here he was you know advocating that you know it's simply cold hard time on a task over time that you know would eventually beat talent every single time right but the younger generation these days we all want quick quick fixes we want that magic pill we want that 90 day, you know, give me, give me the three steps to make, you know, six figures or, you know, uh, yeah. make a million dollars in, in 90 days. It's been there for years. I mean, everyone wants the five minute version, five minute abs version of business, right? Correct. Um, you know, they want that, you know, device that you can buy on the infomercial and it'll work quick. And it just, it, if, if it was like, if it was easy, everyone would do it, right? Yeah. Entrepreneurs on average work 63% more than their counterpart employees, right? When you own a business, you essentially have two jobs. You know, you're not just working in the business, you are now have to work on the business. And everyone wants to think that I can work on the business, but who is going to pay your mortgage while you're working on the business for two or three years till you have something that's actually profitable? You need to be working in the business as to an pay, employee as well. As an employee to pay the bills, and then you're working on the business 
completely separate job with a completely different calendar to actually grow and scale and build out that business. No one's ever mentioned that. Now, I, I'm reading from your book here as well too, Josh. You said, you know, I'm gonna read a little bit from the, the paragraph here. I remember when I first started my accounting firm, I knew how to do the work, but I was ill-prepared as an organization to deliver the service. Uh, I did not have my terms of engagement written out to formal engaged with clients. Tell, tell us a bit more about the story, you know. Uh, what, what did you do and, and that experience? Because you were already a very successful accountant, a CPA. I was a good CPA. Yes. Uh, I could provide very quality tax advice, but in, in my world, I would solve a customer's tax problem and then I would prepare it in software that was pre-installed on computers for me. It would go off to an administration department. That administration department would would output a year-end package, gather signatures, have you know contractual agreements. I did none of that, right? I did none of that. I was the guy who got the credit from solving the problem, right. but without that at rest of the administrative team, everything would fall apart. There was no deliverable service, yeah. right? And so when you start a business, you're going to drastically underestimate all of those systems and processes and templates that have to be set up for the business to function successfully and efficiently. Correct. What would you then advise someone who's just getting started? What are some critical systems or uh, processes that they need to pay attention to? If someone is, let's say, <clears throat> under 100,000 yes. in gross revenue, and we'll talk about those above in just a second, what should they do? Well, number one, let's sell something to someone. So let's have an actual, you know, whether it's an invoice sheet or a checkout form on your website or, you know, a standard terms of engagement, right? Let's have that available because, you know, nothing happens until someone sells something, right? right. So let's have a way to actually, you know, put a proposal in front of a client and get a, you know, name on the bottom there and let's actually start doing work. That's, that would be the first thing. Then you have to start, you know, figuring out what are the systems and processes that you can remove yourself from the administrative functions of the business, okay. right? How do you not answer the phone? Um, how do you, you know, not book appointments? Things like that, right? Um, they're not the value adds. Entrepreneurs think they have to do it, and they shouldn't. You know, Jeff Bezos never answers the phone at Amazon. That's I don't think not he does. How it happens, no, I don't right? think he does. Uh, but some business owners literally pride themselves on that they answer the phone in their own business. Correct. It's like, that's a limiting belief, not, not a value add. Understood. All right, now let's talk about time for a second, Josh. I think a lot of entrepreneurs underestimate, and I was already getting the hint of that at the start of this video, when you said I have to be an employee in my own company and yes. then work on the business. So how much time should the average entrepreneur getting started, or even an, a mid-level entrepreneur, but has never realized this, yes. what is the average time? The minimum you're going to expect to work, and this is not based on my feelings, this is actually based on, on cold hard stats, Harvard Business Review, so, so forth, that you're going to have to work at least 60 hours a week, okay, to make this, to make a goal of it in business. 12 right? hours a day. 12 hours, think about it, 10 hours a day, six days a week, minimum, okay. right? That's the minimum, and just think about it, because you actually have a second job now. You still have to work in the business yes. uh, to pay the bills. Now, if, you, if you're if you blessed with significant startup capital, maybe you can avoid that. For, but for the most people, they're going to have to you know, pay their personal bills. They're going to have to you know, pay the overhead bills of their business. So they're gonna have to work in the business as a full-time employee, yeah. call it 40 hours a week, and they're gonna spend at least another 20 hours a week working on the business. and that's not, you know, uh, a stretch goal. That's kind of the floor where you actually start getting into the game. Now, I would tell people it's, you know, 60 to 80 hours a week. Um, How many years? And usually yeah. to build a business that's actually going to sell, um, it's a decade. It's not in the terms of a year, it's a decade, right? And there's you know, really significant stats on this on, you know, how old businesses are when they're actually listed for sale and actually sell. And it's generally the, the chances that something's gonna be less than five years is very remote, right? Understood. 10 years is it. So it's grinding for 60 plus hours a week for a decade till you actually get that kind of financial freedom that you're looking for. Wow. So another question that I get all the time is, well, Josh, um, I know that you were trying to cover that we have to wear these different hats, you know, like the yes. hiring and the sales and the marketing and the operations and all these different areas. But 
if I want to do the four-hour work week, can I just hire a bunch of people? I mean, you know, isn't that what I'm taught to do? Like just hire a bunch of VAs and that's yeah. how I get my four hours. Yeah. So first of all, there's a couple of problems with that. Number one, when you first start out, your business is not likely to be profitable. First two to three years, it's not likely to be profitable. So who's paying for these staff, you know, for you know, for you to scale down your calendar significantly? Second thing is, you know, employees are not gonna be anywhere nearly as productive as you are when you start the business. So it's gonna take a while for them to scale up, right? Um, and who is going to train these employees? It's going to be the business owner. And it's going to take a significant amount of time if you want to train them effectively, right? Okay. Um, you're going to have to learn how to be a teacher in your business, right? It's not the most successful technicians in any industry that make the most money. It's the people who can teach ordinary technicians to be above average, right? Correct. Uh, that are going to get paid. If well. I can even just teach them to do 80% of what I do or 70% right. of what I do, correct? Now, that's going to take a tremendous amount of time when you're first starting. You're going to have to write systems and processes for them to follow. Um, eventually, as you get rolling, you know, the experienced employees can teach the new employees. That's not how it's going to first start. So thinking that you can immediately scale back your work week because you can hire staff, is, it, it's just a, it's a false belief. So if you found this helpful and you like Josh, then maybe even drill into what are the things that we should be focusing on during those 20 hours or during those 60 hours of work, do let us know in the comments below. Click subscribe, like, and also go check out some of the other videos in the playlist. We will see you in the next video.